tonight's hobby enhancement is Roku Jin. <laughs> Just for a change, I thought I'd do an unboxing video. Haven't done one before, doesn't look too hard. This is the box that the latest shipment from Warlords Games came in. And we're just making an early foray into Black Seas. It's not a game I'd previously thought that I'd get into, but now uh, it seems to be where some of the local lads are uh, heading with the gaming in our community, so being thoroughly eyeballs deep in miniatures for everything else, I thought, what the hell, I have some Christmas money, let's get into it. If you're familiar with the Cognition Fatigue channel, you might have noticed that we're already having a good crack at Victory at Sea. Uh, also by Warlord Games, although Mongoose wrote the rules for that one. And what I did when I got into that was I got a starter set, a fleet box, and a, uh, an extra battleship for uh, the Japanese Navy. And um, I thought I'd follow the same sort of pattern with getting into Black Seas. So we've got the initial box set, Master and Commander. Let's crap out of the way. There we go. We'll have a look at that in a sec. And we've also got the Spanish Navy. Not my first choice, but the British and the uh, uh, French were already taken. And, um, well, I wanted to do something different and the American fleet didn't look particularly well developed at this point in time. It's probably only in there to keep the American market happy. So, of course, we've got the biggest ship they've got, the uh, Centisima Trinidad, which I'm probably not pronouncing properly, and uh, this thing apparently is fucking bonkers. We'll have a look in a moment. What else do we get? Oh, yeah. We also got the... Uh, Limited edition, the Seawolf special figure, who is uh, notably in a different scale to the rest of the ships. Um, seems to follow suit with Warlord's cross-promotional exercises where whenever I spend over a certain amount of money on Victory at Sea stuff, they throw in uh, a limited edition metal character for bolt action. Uh, it seems that their money spinning is in the 28 millimeter space or at least they're very keen on cross-promoting their games. No idea if I'll ever use this thing, but what the hell, you can never have too many minis. All right. So let's start off with the starter box. Uh, the uh, Victory at Sea starter box is particularly good value, I thought, so I got this one. And I shouldn't be sure if you can get the whole book separately, I didn't bother to look. And it tells us on the back, get a bunch of ships, Royal Navy frigate, Royal Navy brig, uh, frigate painted as a British merchant vessel, a French Navy brig, and French Navy frigate. And a whole lot of other guff. We'll have to unpack this to have a proper look at it. Uh, let's pop this up here so we can actually see. Some more of this hobby enhancement before diving into this. Uh, well, we get dice. It's a lot of D10s. A little bit of D6. And it appears to be D3. D3. Weirdo looking D3, but there you go. Cotton wool. Which is a nice touch. Someone's put a bit of thinking into the things that irk gamers. Uh, I have had a bit of a perv at the rules of this before, and you're supposed to mark ships with cotton wool when they fired to show which ship has fired and not fired, which I'm thinking is actually probably going to look pretty good on the tabletop. Uh, they got five bits to show ships that are burning. I'm suspecting I need more of that sooner or later. 
and black cotton, which marks firing out of sequence or some such thing, I can't remember. Anyway, you get cotton wool. Oh, here we go. This is black thread. And I've dropped it already, that doesn't bode well. Why do they give you black thread? Well, these things are, the miniatures are made so you can do the rigging. And there's rather a fucking lot of it, apparently, I'm told. And I'm told it's a bit of a nuisance, it takes a bit of practice. So, <laughs> we go, we've got, <laughs> surprised I didn't give us a needle or maybe some yarn. Um, this is the first time I've bought a miniatures game that comes with its own uh, sewing thread. Uh, I'm just about masochistic enough, enough to give that shit a go, so we'll no doubt go through all of that. Funny that I've got some shirts that need some attention. Okay, what have we got? Two types of shit. one I'm assuming this is a frigate uh, how to tell you how big these are well, let's put it next to the tactical announcement there's a lime in there that's how big the ship is compared to a lime uh, hmm what if that makes it a lime juice tub should have thought of that joke in advance it might have been funnier uh, so anyway that's a frigate and this is, must be the brig. So we've got, this makes one ship, and this makes one ship. Um, we've got three of each. Doesn't look like that complicated to assemble as a plastic model. Detail's very nice. Oh. And my toddlers just come screaming through, hang on. Right, parenting duties completed again. Oh god. You never put them to bed just once. Um right, so let's have a close look at the minis. And the detail is actually quite nice. I've seen a few of these painted up by a mate, and they come out very nicely. Yeah, the rigging is gonna be the bastard bit of it, but I think if we don't do the rigging, they're gonna look a lot more ordinary. So there we go. Three frigates and uh, brigs. Alright. What else have we got in here? Oh, instructions, of course. Too hard to follow. Hmm. I'll open this in a moment. Apparently, this was packed by Mirilla. Thank you, Mirilla. Ah, uh, we get a C map. Right, let's have a look at this. I actually, yeah, okay. So this is like Atlantic on one side and Pacific on the other side of me. So that's what I took it to mean because. Looks like you get one in this box, which makes sense because it seems that most of the scenarios, at least in the starter kit, are built around a 3x4 map. In Victory at Sea, you actually get two of these things in the starter box. That said, I went out and bought a Deep Cut Studio final map, just because I got one for a space map, and I know they're pretty good. They don't have any uh, fold marks or creases in them. Uh, and it's been serving me quite well, uh, complete with being able to wipe off uh, uh, various residue from whatever we're drinking and fuck knows what else has somehow ended up on it. That's what happens when you have little children running around the house, they go and grab things and you never know where those fingers have been. Um, as you qualify, they've usually been somewhere involving food, uh, but you never know. So, um, yeah, and the Deep Cut Studio map's about halfway in between the Pacific and the Atlantic versions, but these uh, maps are quite serviceable, and if you run to be stronger, I suppose, uh, stick into some um, MDF, whatever you use. 
but yeah, no, it's good how they include a, a decent size map. Uh, and you get the rule book. Now, as I said, I've had a read of this before. Uh, really easy rules, really simple. Um, I won't go into too much detail of the actual rules, suffice to say, it's one of those games which seems to be less words and more figuring out how to use them. Um, you know, everything you need to figure out how movement works. There's basic rules you can get stuck into and there's more advanced stuff. I think we'll be straight into the more advanced stuff. It seems more the fun gear is. Uh, modifiers, you know, the usual stuff. This is one of the, uh, one of those sorts of things where you work out your hit thing and you go plus, plus, minus, minus and figure out what the hell you actually need to roll. Uh, once I've played a couple of games, I might have an opinion on how it actually works, but it looks pretty straightforward. It looks pretty good. Um, the book's presented very nicely. High grade glossy paper. Not too many words, but they do have does the job well. Um, um, intro scenarios, advanced rules. More advanced scenarios, rules for fog banks, sand banks, anything you need really. Uh, now they do have, oh yeah, a guide to ships so we know what the bloody things actually are. That's a good start. Oh, and a guide to sails, let's get that in the picture. And the mast so we know what the hell we're actually talking about because for certain landlubbers who have never really looked at naval combat before, um, well, I've got no fucking idea, frankly. I'm gonna have to figure it out. It's nice that they actually tell you. Oh, glossary of naval terms. There you go. Let's get that in short. Not sure how much of this I'll actually memorize, but it's nice to have something to get us using the terminology along with the boffins who might already be well and truly into this. Oh, I get loaded. There's a lovely cross section of HMS of Victory. Uh, various explanations of how the ships work, which, you know, when you get down to it, wargaming is basically storytelling in, in the uh, the form of a contest. Uh, and if you're going to do storytelling, I suppose you need to know the names of the characters. So knowing the names of uh, just which idiot fucked up which order and caused your ship to catch fire is probably a good thing. Uh, let's see. Post captain on the big ship. Uh, master and commander and commander of a brig who presumably... Uh, didn't know what he was doing and would now be demoted to lieutenant. I don't know, that sort of thing. Well, maybe that's just a reflection of how my games tend to go. Uh, lots of descriptions of the ships. Uh, I haven't figured out the dice system yet. I'll have to have a go at the game before we work out just how many um, dice means and what effect in the grand scheme of things. And you can upgrade your ship. Boarding nets. Uh, master gunners. Overgunned, that's a good one. Um, lucky. You can upgrade your ship to be lucky. That'll appeal to some folks more than us, I'm, I'm sure. <clears throat> and then we have national special rules for the four factions which they've got. They've got Great Britain. Yeah, it does, it, <clears throat> here's something I haven't seen a lot of in rules. It says you can use the following rules to add extra character to your games, making them more thematic. You should agree with these before you with your opponent in advance as they introduce a certain degree of imbalance to the rule system favors the british somewhat uh i didn't have a look at the rule book until sometime after i bought everything and it was on order oh by the way you can get special characters you, you can field uh, lord horatio nelson and the victory and yeah so forth apparently the victory is still in service which is nice um but yes, the British, as you'd expect, are very good. The French, they've got some good traits. A little different to the British. That adds a bit of character. Uh, the Americans, they... Um, the Americans have special rules as well, which also make them quite good. Some nice characters, including Oliver Hazard Perry, which came as a surprise, given that I'd uh, played so many computer games with Oliver Hazard Perry Destroyers. Uh, turns out there's a reason they named their ships after that guy. Um, yeah, so the national rules for America are pretty good. <clears throat> the national rules for Spain, 
uh, a bit shit house, which is unfortunate given I've just spent rather a lot of money on the French uh, fleet and uh, capital ship. But there you go, we'll have to suck it up and uh, just field lots of really big ships with it, which get heavy, uh, heavily armed, as in more cannon shots for free. Uh, <laughs> that's the only thing we get. And they're, they're not trained very often, so I'm sure the British will be doing lots more special rules than I will. But anyway, that's the book. Well presented. Alright, let's see what we get here. Hmm. Bag split open on this. I'm supposed to open at the other end, but this one's had a bit of battering on the way. You get flags. This appears to just be printed on card, so flags all nations by the look of things. I have to cut these out and glue them on. British flags. Not a lot of Spanish flags, that's interesting. Although they do have <laughs> this skull and crossbone flags. Okay. So they do like privateers here apparently. Look at this. Lots of um, lots of French flags. A little bit of the Spanish. I think the Spanish are the ones with the yellow on them, so hmm, we'll do this a bit more, I think. And okay, so these are the sails, and it looks like these are punch card. Here we go, they pop out. Um, it's quite nice. I guess casting on plastic was too much. Like hard work to get a good result. Nice that they're labelled. Painted both sides. That'll do the job. Hmm. What's going on here? So we've got darkly painted sails and lightly painted sails. Wonder what that's about. Ah, red line sheets. Hmm. It looks like this is printed on clear plastic. Here we go. So we're going to have to cut that out and glue it on. That will be interesting. Okay. It'll look great as well, I think. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Somewhere in this book. Here we go. A double page spread. This is a uh, seven step plan to putting all the bloody thread on your ship. Uh, it's all in black thread. Um, it's just in different colors to show you the different stages of the process. Lots of glue knots, doing things with tweezers. No idea how long it'll take. Apparently doing the first one is the worst. Thank you Andrew for letting me know about that. Uh, it looks like it's got to be done though. I think these things look a little bit naked without it, but um, yeah, double page spread on how to put together your rat lines. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go into detail about the uh, yeah, about these sheets, the rat line sheets. It's all about putting the, uh, the ropes on. All right, we'll figure it out. Okay, what do we got here? This appears to be a brig. That there tells you the uh, angle of turn. Apparently, depending on the level of sails you've got is the number of moves you get. And this says it moves at five knots. That's probably damage. That I think is the number of damage points it gets before you, or it's got to get down to you before it starts deciding whether or not to strike the colours and surrender. And that tells you how many guns it's got. Um, mm, okay. Nice little thing not to. Oh, here we go. Alright, well, what you do is you. You put your 
ship on this and you slide this under the ship to the level of sail so light sails battle sails and full sails and depending on which of this is light sails means you get to move once before you turn battle sails means you get to move twice and i think you can turn each time you move and full sail means you move three times and can turn each time you move and this then tells you how many inches you move so brigs are pretty quick moves five inches makes a turn guided by that v and if you're at battle sail you then move another five inches and make another turn so these things will fly around all over the joint um the big ships are not that agile uh, and uh, if you haven't seen them before these are the same damage sliders that you get or very similar to what you get in victory at sea so you punch these out pop them on here and it marks how many uh Damage points you have less. Take a few points of damage, slide it down. Um, I've seen the Victory at Sea Facebook page. Some people love them, some people hate them. I actually think they work pretty well. I can't complain. Does the job. So that's a brig. Appears uh, to be double. Yeah, same shit on both sides. Uh, it does a decimal system, so you know it's, it's 20 here. So if you take a bit of damage, drop it down to 10, slide that up and down. Yeah, you get the general idea. Here's we've got a few of these things, and look at this. Dark and light colours match the, the maps. And it occurs to me that this game was released 20, what, 19? So these C maps, these damage sliders, there we are, nice and branded, from 2019, we just repurposed the Victory at Sea. Does the job. I guess that's a nice thing about ocean terrain. Water is fucking water is fucking water, whether you're fighting in uh, 1940 or 1740. Okay. So there we are at that. Appears to be, you know, all the ships. That appears to be the introductory box set. No, oh, no, hang on, wait, wait, there's more. There's more. I'm not going to move on to a free set of steak knives, but there's definitely more. Right, let's pack up all these funny games. <clears throat> what have we got here? Ooh. Shit, eh? I better open this up. Let me get into this and see if a thumbnail will do the job. Fast forward or edit this bit, this is going to be a little bit awkward. Uh, get the fucking shrink wrap off of it. I remember many, many years ago in a White Dwarf magazine reading about Jervis Johnson. I think it was maybe to be ashamed of somebody. How much they love the board games where you buy a board game and the first thing you do is you pull the shrink wrap off and you inhale deeply now that unique smell of a new board game. Which is best I can tell is the residue chemical from the printing process which has been trapped in there and basically you're inhaling a texture. Um, not recommended, but I haven't passed out yet, so we must be alright with this lot. Okay, we get some punch card terrain. Okay, that looks like a reef. Island, a full island that breaks into four pieces, so you can do corner or side bits. Was this a sandbar? Maybe I don't know. Ooh, double sided. Tropics. Atlantic, maybe. Hey, look at this. They are sandbars. There were rocky shoals on one side, and there's rules for that in the terrain. And we have sandbars on the other side. I mean, I'll probably do some islands. 3D, I don't know, I've got designs on that amongst myriad other projects, but um, sandbars and things don't really mean to be made out of foam core. I think the card will do just fine for those. Um, okay, very nice, very pretty. Ah, look at this. Okay, oh, well, this is the turning gauge where you 
pop your ship in there and you turn it according to the arcs there. And we've got things to record the hits that your ships have taken. Critical damage. Normally I write mine down, but um, that's in victory at sea where it's a, a, a cumulative damage system. This appears to be more of a one hit, you take a damage in that area and it just stays there until you fix it. A bit simpler, so these, these uh, counters might work. And what have we got? We've got gun emplacements. We've got a causeway and a jetty, that's nice. Right, oh, and the uh, the wind direction. Um, yeah, you bolt these onto there, I think. These arrows onto the uh, turn dial. The direction of the wind is all powerful and all important in this game, uh, perhaps not surprisingly. What have we got here? We have measuring sticks that also tell us whether well, the right width to measure the, uh, the, the width of the gun. Um, what would you call it? Fire lane. It's more of a fire lane than an arc for the broadside, so you have to pretty much line up square on. Oh, look, more flags. Oh, that'll be useful. I'll be needing those. Markers to show you what sort of cannonball you're firing. So there's different types of cannonball which have different types of effect. Uh, no fucking idea why they have flocks of seagulls or whales, but there you go. Um, not sure what that's supposed to represent. Oh, Marines. I'm also not sure what to do with that. Maybe they use that for boarding actions. I'll have to check that out in a bit more detail. But yeah, rulers. And look, you probably won't need a ruler much longer than this and then until it comes to shooting. Um, oh man, look at this. They've cut the angles in the card already. Hmm. Are you measuring your turns? Okay. Anyway. You probably will need a tape measure still for this game because the range of the uh, uh, heavy cannons goes up to like 20 inches or something. I don't provide you with a ruler in the box. That's just for movement and for shooting by the look of things. So shooting width. Well, that's it. That's the box. Quite happy with that, I have to say. I'll uh, crack open the other uh, boxes that came with it in just a moment. And I'll just put this away safe and sound first. Next up, I'm going to crack open the Spanish Navy Fleet box. Seems I've had some more of this. Alright, let's have a look in here. Where is this? Uh, vacuum sealed stuff. straight down the barrel in the last box. No, oh, just one of these. Oh, I do love a whopping great big pile of plastic in a box. So what we should have here is third rate, which are actually still pretty good ships in this. First rate Briggs, frigates. What do you got? One resin of metal first rate. That means they don't make enough of them for a warrant uh, doing vacuum molding. Um, three plastic third rates. Well, those are basically frigates. Six plastic Briggs. Um, one resin of metal gunboat squadron. That's interesting, that's resin of metal. Also means I don't make enough of them to bother with the vacuum molding. But it's worth noting that the majority of the ships in this game appear to be more or less the same thing. You just put different colours on it. Everyone's following very similar designs, so I don't think they've gone and done you know, unique vacuum molds for each fleet. Uh, frigate is a frigate is a frigate, stick your flag on it. Uh, metal backplates and figureheads. Okay, so you can build famous ships. So the Neptuno. I'm, I'm assuming that there's these things for the uh, the famous um, uh, British and French ships as well. There we go. These are the metal um, backplates and uh, 
figureheads, and it's worth noting if you do get to shoot at the back plate or something, it does extra damage, so there's a tactical hint. All right, let's put that over here for a sec. More thread. <laughs> I suspect I'll need it. Ah, more instructions. Lots of instructions. Figures, there's lots of ships. So oh, what have we got here? Well, that looks impressive. Maybe it's not a frigate. Maybe it's more powerful than a frigate. It's third rate. I have to have a look at the pulse for this because that's quite a lot of guns for a frigate. Um, yeah, it appears to be the same for this. So there's more than one of it, and it's not the uh, it's not the first rate. On the plastic, they can't be the first rate. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to see if those are frigates or something more powerful. Ah, uh, so there's the three frigates. Bunch of brigs. Hmm, these are different. No, oh, what have we got? Third, no, we've got three plastic third rates and three plastic frigates. Okay, third rates are more powerful than frigates. Frigates are probably fifth or sixth rate. Ah, oh, kidoki. Six plus, this is a lot of ships, is what? Uh, 13 ships plus the gumbo squadron, that's pretty good. Um, so this is the frigate, that looks more like a frigate. Not quite as many guns. Um, God, I'm getting my bits mixed up already. Okay, so these are the brigs again. So pretty much the same thing that was in the other box. Um, worth noting, it says Black Seas Napoleonic Briggs. It doesn't say anything about being specifically Spanish. It doesn't need to. Uh, it's worth noting the Spanish fleet, and every country's got its colours. The Spanish fleet likes a red with black trim. The British seem to like yellow or ochre, uh, apparently uh, baby sick yellow, I think they called it, uh, with black trim. Uh, French, pretty similar, more white and blue trim though, and the Americans are a bit of a mishmash, but it says that there's a bit of variability, so you can go with whatever you like. Um, I'm going to go for simplicity with this lot and probably airbrush red on everything and then paint black around it because that's easy to do. I might show that later on once I've actually done it. It might take a little while with the life commitments. Okay, so we've got all of that. Here we have a Spanish first rate. And it's worth noting the Spanish special rules, the only benefit you get only applies to first rate ships. Which you get one in the Spanish Navy fleet, uh, plus their, their big capital ship, uh, you know, flagship if you want to do it, which I think already comes with those rules, but it's probably easier than the first rate. Oh, 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 look at that pretty. Get a load of that. Let's see if I can get some focus. That's a fucking lot of cannonballs. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Oh, there's a planking on the top. Yes. Um, so she comes with the. Let's get that in focus. There we are. Comes with the backing already, but let's have a look at the backing plate next. Um, Hmm. Oh, yeah, you get, let's get this in the shot, shall we? You get little boats, masts uh, with the bottom sails up, which is combat sails. You want to get them outside of the line of shot for the cannonballs. Uh, whatever the hell that is. More sails, more boats. Oh, uh, let's see if we get a focus shot on these. These look like mountings for the, uh, what are they called? Figureheads. Not quite sure what they were supposed to be. Lions, maybe. Now, on these, you do get back plates. Uh, I don't see any for this boat unless 
unless the back plate is already moulded on. Could be. Better bag this before I lose it. It's amazing in the lifetime of this hobby, we've gone from everything being made out of metal, including land speeders, to now every fucking thing being made out of plastic, including all the infantry. And it now gets me as a bit of a surprise when I find something come in a box that's actually got metal in it. You know, resin's becoming more and more unusual. Uh, remember the old um, Flames of War stuff where the bloody tanks used to come in metal? And they came to resin with bits of metal and now it's all plastic. Which actually works better, I have to say. I can't complain. Um, more announcement. Uh, it's only work tomorrow, should be alright. Alright, let's get into this. This is a whole shitload of gun, that's weird. The, okay, the Neptuno. It looks like the metal back plates have been chucked in here with the gumbo bits. Um, <laughs> signed off by V, apparently. All uh, right, so, oh, they're more figure heads. Big figure heads, all right, well, um, Okay, well, we'll uh, open this another day. No, I've got this open now. Okay, dokie, okay. where's the biggest back plate? That'll be this one. This would be the Neptuno, which I presume is the name of this fella here. Oh, let's get that in focus. There we go. And we've got a bow sprit, which I presume will go on. There? Maybe? Or maybe, mm, fuck, I don't know. Oh, no, it goes on like this. Right. Hmm, <laughs> no, I don't have to figure that out. Uh, there'll be an instruction somewhere. And then we've got... Okay, so these are the sails for the gunboats. Metal. The actual gunboats themselves are moulded into the... C piece, okay, so. Oh, look, isn't that cute? You got one gun at the front, one gun on each side. Isn't that pretty? And the sails go on here. Oh, it goes in rather easily. That gunboat is almost entirely sail. Okay, well, it's nice that they included one of those because I'm probably not going to bother buying a box of them. Unless I find that my uh, Spanish navy is having rings run around it by much better trained um, English people. Okay, let's pop this away. I suspect it's a bad idea to lose any of these items. Any bubble wrap bags, which I use for just that little bloody thing under the sun these days. Now, I don't think there'll be anything in here we haven't seen before, so I'm not going to bother opening it. But what we got is more of the ship cards. Oh, look, gunboats. They move at four inches. 12 damage points, I think. Give up on four, we've got to test at least. Yeah, 12 damage points because you've got 10 in that. And it's got one gun. It looks like a light gun, presumably to the front. They are the A-wing of the game, apparently. More sails, more rat planes in there. More of these um, wake markers, all the good stuff. Right, let's just have one quick look at the size of the ships in comparison. So we have, let's line them up. Okay, we have the Briggs. Then we have, 
rigs, the frigates, and we've got the third rate, which are decent sized gunships really, battleships, ships, ships of the line, and then we've got this motherfucker right here. So, <laughs> oh, it's a bit meatier. Um, like the uh, decking okay let's have a look at the decks compared to each other this is a third rate compared to a first rate <laughs> then probably a fifth rate um, frigate compared to the third rate and compared to the first rate Quite a bit bigger. Uh, let's see if we compare a third rate, get out of the way, to the uh, um, brig. We're not sure if a brig's even rates, it might be less than a rating. And if we compare that brig <laughs> Yeah, first rate is definitely something of a zone. We compare the deck space. Oh my lordy my! All right, well we're going to leave those out, I think, because next we're going to have a look at the big boy. We also got the Santisma Trinidad, the capital ship, which apparently did see a bit of battle. Uh, it's slow; it only moves three inches, and you got to do a skill test, and you know their skill's not that great. You do a skill test to go full sail. So you're just about going to be going around a battle sail all the time. And I think you only get to turn once after you've... <laughs> no matter how many, how many times you move, you only get one turn in your entire game turn. So it's a bit of a lug. All right, let's... <laughs> But no, use your fingernails, Chris. Alright. So, this Trinidad. Ooh, look at that, it comes with all the, all the flags. And 144 hull points, apparently. Oh, and 48. You get down to 40. Okay, moose 3. Flying fuck tons of cannon. Um, small sheet of the uh, ratings, that's interesting. Well, already efficiency decisions were around behind that. Anyway, all the stuff you need to make it operational. More bloody thread, I'll be very disappointed if I need all of this on the one model. Sail, whopping great big. Oh, I've got to take this out. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at this chunk of metal. Let's get a bit of shot of that. Here we go. That's an awful lot of ocean view windows. This is the Trinidad. And that fits in there like this. Oh my god. Uh, it's still going to take a bit of. It's a little bit of fitting actually. It's not too bad. <laughs> uh, just when I thought that it wasn't working. And just to give you an idea, the difference between the first rate and the Trinidad. Um, quite similar. But it appears the main difference is that the Trinidad, and a few trim differences on top, I mean, it's got a slightly different makeup uh, on the deck and the uh, quarter deck. Length is similar, it was, God, it's a bit fatter. 
Yes, it's fatter than the average first rate. But the main thing is they've lined the entire top deck with an extra layer of gun. So this thing is over gunned by definition. And you can even see them molded in there. That's gonna be fun to paint. Ah, oh, man, this thing's a beast. Yeah, I may just use it as a standard first rate on occasion, but my God, that thing's nasty. Well. <laughs> okay, well. You know, fun painting this up. It's gonna take a little while. I've got a few other projects on the go that I have to be put aside for me to get through it all. But, you know, I really did not need another bloody game system to get into, but in for a penny, in for a pound. Um, I reckon this will be a lot of fun on that night. Time to finish off the uh, hobby enhancement. It's a school night, so thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that, uh, all that crap. And time to call it a night.